Hi, my name is Joni Bennett. I'm a student physical therapist assistant at Jefferson State Community College, and tonight I'm going to be talking about necrotizing fasciitis. So necrotizing fasciitis is a relatively rare but very aggressive type of soft tissue infection that spreads rapidly and is often misdiagnosed for other integumentary diseases. Uh, it was described first by Hippocrates in the 5th century, and the description from the American Civil War is very relevant to presentation of the disease today. Um, it was described as a purple or blue spot first perceived. The skin in the affected spot melts away within 24 hours, whilst a deep blue and purple, almost black areola surrounding the dead mass spreads rapidly in ever-increasing circles. Um, during the Civil War, necrotizing fasciitis was called hospital gangrene. The infection has been known by many other names in the past, but the presentation is typically the same. Intense pain, slight edema, following by, followed by blistering, ulceration, and finally necrosis of skin and fascia. So the Centers for Disease Control estimate 500 to 1,500 cases of necrotizing fasciitis per year in the U.S., uh, but international agencies estimate incidences much higher. Necrotizing fasciitis can occur at any, rate, any age, um, although some studies do show a slight increase of risk in patients over the age of 50. Other risk factors include diabetes mellitus, peripheral artery disease, intravenous drug use, and obesity. Cases involving children um, are often associated with recent varicella zoster infections. Necrotizing fasciitis can be caused by several different organiz organisms, but the most common tend to be streptococcus and staphylococcus. It could be a combination of the two or gram-negative organisms, along with many others. So, necrotizing fasciitis is difficult to diagnose because in the early stages, the patient may only exhibit pain in the extremities um, with some slight swelling and erythema or redness. Um, these symptoms can easily be mistaken for deep vein thrombosis, compartment syndrome, or even cellulitis. The pain and slight swelling may quickly advance to swollen area with distinct margins that progresses to bruising and eventually full thickness necrosis. The infection moves very rapidly and can occur following surgery or a trivial injury such as a cut or a scrape. Following the initial pain and swelling, the infection proceeds quickly to localized blisters, ulceration, and necrosis. Um, Diagnosing necrotizing fasciitis is difficult because it initially presents like many other less severe infections um, and also because it tends to progress very quickly. Um, the diagnosis requires a high level of suspicion from medical professionals. The defining symptom is superficial and widespread necrosis. Um, frequently the orthopedic surgeon and general practitioner tend to be the first line of diagnosis. A physician who suspects necrotizing fasciitis should be sure to look closely at the patient's history, including any surgeries or trauma to the skin, even minor, as well as travel to other countries or a history of tonsillitis or impetigo. While this disease is relatively rare, the mortality rate worldwide has been published as high as 76%. Level of involvement at the time of diagnosis and admission into the hospital determine mortality rates making early diagnosis even more important. Treatment for necrotizing fasciitis involves antibiotics and radical debridement, which may include amputation. Uh, survival rates depend on early diagnosis and treatment. In one study, the average time from onset of symptoms to diagnosis was five days. Um, when one looks at the survival rates in this study, uh, the importance of early diagnosis becomes apparent the patients who were diagnosed within four days survived, while those who did not survive averaged seven days from symptom onset to diagnosis. So only a three day difference between survival and death. Um, physicians are also looking into alternative and less invasive treatments to necrotizing fasciitis because the scars formed from the traditional treatments um, can be quite devastating. Um, here we can see a patient's uh, following skin grafts to repair following the radical debridement of a necrotizing fasciitis um, infection on the thigh. So um, physical therapists have a major part to play in the treatment of patients um, with necrotizing fasciitis. 
The interventions may begin immediately following diagnosis uh, to include modalities to reduce pain and edema and may continue throughout the patient's recovery, including patient education, strengthening, and gait training. Um, Cross-contamination is a major concern for the physical therapist. Um, universal procedures and contact precautions must be followed and extreme care must be taken with any equipment that comes in contact with the patient's infected skin. Therapy may be contraindicated if the patient is experiencing toxic shock syndrome or hypotension. The physical therapist must pay close attention to the patient's vital signs and pain levels during treatments. Um, physical therapy interventions vary depending on the involvement of the fascia, uh, the progression of the infection and medical treatments the patient may be receiving. Um, after the infection is treated, um, the physical therapist may need to work with the patient to regain strength and range of motion. Soft tissue mobilization may be used for scar mobilization. Um, and if the patient has received an amputation due to the infection, the physical therapy interventions will include patient education, um, edema control, residual limb uh, care and wrapping, muscle strengthening, um, balance and proprioception, um, training and gait training. In the event of an amputation, the physical therapist will work closely with the physician and a prosthetist to ensure that the patient is able to return to their highest level of function. So treatment for necrotizing fasciitis falls under preferred practice pattern 7E, which is impaired integumentary with skin involvement extending into fascia, muscle, or bone, um, and sparse formation. This pattern addresses impairment of joint integrity, sensation, skin, um, muscle weakness, and decreased range of motion. And um, if a patient uh, does require amputation following infection, the treatment would also follow preferred practice pattern uh, 4J, which is impaired motor function, muscle performance, range of motion, gait, locomotion, and balance associated with amputation. So necrotizing fasciitis is a very rare, um, but very dangerous infection that can be very difficult to diagnose. Um, it's typically a very fast moving infection, and it's imperative that medical professionals know what to look for um, because this infection does usually present very similar to other less dangerous skin infections. Um, if a patient presents with what appears to be a minor integumentary infection, but the pain is inconsistent with that infection, the medical professional must question if the patient may have necrotizing fasciitis. Um, early diagnosis and treatment are essential for patient survival. Um, necrotizing fasciitis does have a very high mortality rate and that rate does increase the longer initial treatment is delayed. Um, so we must be aware and be willing to look at the more unlikely diagnosis if that's what it takes to save a patient's life. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. Thank you.